So uh, obviously the, the topic tonight is how to showcase yourself, your expertise through content creation. Um, and I'll get to that in a, in a second. Sorry if my mic's kind of going all over the place. Um, but first I want to talk a, just a little bit about Femgineer Forums. Because um, we try to be a little bit unique. You know, there's a lot of women's organizations out there. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of men here, and that's cool, too. We, uh, we, we want everybody to come and participate. Um, but the reason that we're a little bit unique is it's not just a networking event. It's not just an event where we do, like, talks and panels. Um, to me, what's really important is that everybody comes and learns. Um, but not just learns, like you're sitting in a classroom, but also applies. So we typically pick a topic that we think is going to be beneficial to working professionals, whether they're engineers, PMs, designers, marketers, and then I will do a little bit of a talk, and then towards the end, you'll actually break out into groups so that you can take some of the things that I've talked about and actually practice them and get feedback from your peers, right? Because the last thing I want you to do is go back to work tomorrow, sit in your cubicle and be like, what did she say? I don't know how to do that now, right? So that's why we give you a little bit of practice. Um, and so I'm going to encourage you all to stick around once I'm done talking to do your breakout sessions so that you can get some of that feedback from your peers that you wouldn't necessarily get in a work setting. Or if you did ask in a work setting, it'd probably feel like criticism, right? Here it's a little bit more open. Um, so keep that in mind. So on to the agenda for today. Um, I want to talk to you about a few things. So the first is, why is this even important, right? Why is content important? Well, you've got all these amazing artists here. Um, maybe some of you are artists, but maybe some of you are professionals. Uh, the truth is that it doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're an artist or whether you're a professional, you need to get used to creating some content. And I know it's kind of tricky to figure out what your expertise is. So we'll talk about how can you figure out what areas of expertise you have that you could showcase. Um, the, the third is how do you build up an audience, right? Just because you're an amazing creator and can put out content, that's just one piece. The other piece is how do you get people to actually buy your stuff or at least check it out and give you feedback and, and grow that base. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then finally, if any of you are in here who are all gritty creators, um, maybe you have a blog, maybe you're thinking about a blog, or maybe you're thinking about writing a book someday. It doesn't even have to be today or tomorrow or in a year, but someday. We're going to talk about how you can package all of that up and do some sales. Oh, wait, I got to point this way. <laughs> So here's what we're not going to talk about, just to, just to kind of set things up. We're not going to talk about how you get a publishing deal, right? If you want that, I know people who are great and who have done that. Today we're going to talk about self-publishing, right? How you as independents can actually use a platform like Gumroad and your own sort of, you know, chutzpah to get things off the ground. Um, we're also not going to talk about growth hacking. So if you're here to get thousands and thousands of audience members, sorry, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to start kind of laying the foundation so that eventually you can can get to that point. So just to take a little bit of a step back and explain why this is important to me, uh, back in 2007 when I started at my first startup, Mint.com, uh, I was the founding engineer there and I had a number of great people that I was working with. Um, one of those people was Noah Kagan. I don't know if many of you are familiar with Noah. He writes this blog called OK Dork. Um, he's also now the founder of AppSumo. Uh, and he and this investor, Dave McClure, were like, you know, you should really start a blog. And I was like, yeah, I used to write a lot as a kid, but I don't know, it seems like a lot of work. I, I don't know if I can like up to it. And they're like, no, just like start a blog and start writing. I'm like, what would I write about? Like, who's gonna wanna hear from me? Uh, and so I thought about it a little bit and I was like, well, the only things that I care about at that time, probably still right now, is engineering and entrepreneurship. So I was like, let me start a blog. I searched around for the name, finally came up with Femgineer. And I started writing. I didn't write a whole lot. I just wrote when I felt like it. I wrote about my experiences. I didn't write how to do you know, coding or anything like that. I just kept it kind of lighthearted. Uh, and then over the years, I started to notice this trend where people were reading my content. Uh, so I would go to events or go to conferences, and they'd be like, oh yeah, I'm junior, I've read it. And then for a moment, I was like, oh crap. <laughs> like, I better start polishing this up. Because I was putting out silly stuff. I was writing like, poems like Ode to Code, and oh, I went on this like amazing adventure to Italy, and I was like, maybe I, should, maybe I should make this a little bit more professional since people are reading it, right? So I didn't think about it, I just kind of you know, started to build this space. Um, and then most recently, in like the last year and a half, I decided that I was getting so many opportunities from it. I was getting speaking and teaching and, and writing opportunities, I thought, there's really something here that I didn't even know existed. Uh, and that's when I decided at the end of 2012 to actually take my blog and make it into a business. Uh, so today, Femgineer is an education company, 
Um, but a lot of that initial content came from writing that you know, blog for six to seven years. Um, and I've obviously made it a little bit more specific now. But when I started, I was kind of all over the place. I was just testing. I was finding my voice. And it was a great outlet for that. So the reason that I bring this story up is you don't have to go in with some kind of intention, right? You don't have to go in saying, oh, I'm going to have like a million subscribers, or this has to be a cash cow, or this is going to get me my next job. Those things will naturally happen, but it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of nurturing to do that. But if you get started, then a lot of cool things happen eventually. So I don't know if any of you know this little guy. Uh, he's not Dr. Tran, but you know, in the, in the little internet meme, Everyone's always like, oh, you're, you're a doctor. And it's like, no, I'm not a doctor. So you know, I hear this all the time when I tell somebody like, oh, you know, you're an expert, or you've got some expertise. And they're like, uh, no, I'm not an expert. Um, and they're right. You know, of course you're not an expert, because really nobody is essentially an expert. Um, the truth is that people have different things that they want to share, ideas, uh, experiences. So you don't have to think of yourself as like, oh, I'm this JavaScript or this design expert or this comic book illustrator, right? You don't have to start from being an expert. Really what you have to start from is, I have this idea or I've had this experience and I want to share it with somebody else. So the reason that I bring this up is because when you start from that place, then you're not in this fearful mode. You're not like, oh, I need to know everything about this topic in order to write something about it, in order to present a video or you know, whatever your type of uh, format is. Now, the other thing is that the real, real thing you want to think about is think about like show and tell, right? How many of you did show and tell in elementary school? Okay, the vast majority of you, right? And what did you do during show and tell? You know, the teacher would say, like, bring an object and talk about it. Well, that's kind of what, you know, creating content is like initially, until you start doing it professionally. But when you're just getting started, a lot of it is, hey, I took this trip, or I decided to join this startup, or this is what I do for a living, or here's my cute cat, and look what he did, right? Um, so it's really just about showing and telling people what it is that you've done on a daily basis. And yeah, that can seem really mundane, but the truth is you want to have some variety of content, right? Because people won't necessarily engage with you if all you do is write the same dry thing over and over again. They want to have that variety. They, they want to have, you know, those cat pictures, surprisingly. Um, I know, because my audience asks for them too. Because really what you're trying to do is you're trying to form a connection, right? You're trying to connect with people, and different people, you know, some people want the super, like, how to 10 steps, walk me through it, and some people want the cat pictures. So you've got to think about how you can show off your personality, your life, and your profession in that different kind of, in those different kinds of posts, in that different kind of content. Now, you might not believe this, right? But there are a number of people that want to connect with you today. You might be like, who wants to get to know me? Like, I'm nobody. Well, maybe right now you're nobody, but the truth is, or maybe you're somebody, uh, but the truth is that there's a lot of people that actually want to connect with you, right? There are potential employers, companies, customers, possibly in the future. Uh, and the truth is that the way that they want to connect with you isn't always at a networking event, right? Because how many of us want to go to like a networking event and be like, hey, I'm so-and-so and I do this and that? Right? Usually they want to see the work that you've done and then be like, wow, that's really cool. I'm going to leave a little comment here, or I'm going to email this person, or wow, I really kind of understand how they operate now. Maybe I'll reach out to them. So the real reason, you know, it's not just about connecting, but it's also being approachable. So the more that we write and the more that we share, the more approachable we are, and people are then open to actually coming out and talking to us. So. Despite what you think, right, people are going to reach out to you once they know how you think, right? Somebody who's a recruiter or uh, an employee or a coworker at a company is going to reach out to you once they get a sense of how you think. And the best way to represent that is by doing something like creating content, whether it's writing or whether it's a video or a podcast. So then we come to this, you know, tricky topic. It's like, ah, uh, I don't know what I'm good at, right? I don't really know. There's a lot of things that I do but I'm really just not sure even where to get started. So here's the thing that I would say, is you don't need to have like this abundance of experience. When I started writing Femgineer, I was writing about entrepreneurship, and I had been at the startup for like six months. So what the hell did I know, right? Uh, but I just talked about kind of the ups and downs. I talked about how the team was growing. I talked about some of the engineering decisions that we were making, and that was sufficient, right? The other thing is, 
um, you need to showcase what you feel confident about. So if you don't feel confident about something, don't talk about it, right? If you feel really confident about your amazing ahi tuna recipe, then talk about that, right? The key is you owning up to what you know and what you don't know. Now, the other couple things to think about are, is there something that you're currently working on that's exciting to you, right? A project. You might feel like, why am I doing this? Everyone should already know this. But the truth is a lot of people might not. It might seem obvious to you, but someone else might not have that expertise or they might want a way to learn that. So showcasing what you're working on today as long as the people at your current company don't mind and it's not confidential. So the key is you might think that this is already done and it might very well be done, right? The things that you might be talking about, there might be 10 other people that are talking about it as well. But you might have a new perspective on it or you might actually engage with an audience that they don't. I can t pretty much tell you that there's probably 10 other guys who are writing the same content that I am, but you know, I've got a slightly different audience. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, the other thing to think about is that people aren't omniscient. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you feel like, oh, they're already gonna know this stuff, or there's like five other books on this, or you know, I, I think that they're just gonna think that I'm presenting things that they already know. That's fine. It's okay if they already know, because the truth is a lot of times people come and consume content for repetition, right? I know it takes me at least like three to four times to hear the same thing or to read similar blog posts before it actually like seeps in. Maybe I'm the only one with a thick head. Uh, but I know that people want to hear this similar information from multiple sources. It's also how they gauge whether something's credible or not. So don't feel like just because it's been done before or just because people might know about it, it's not worth talking about. So what are some things that you could possibly think about sharing? Well, if you are an engineer or the technical type, you can think about sharing languages that you might be currently learning. You can think about frameworks, like if there's a new framework that you implemented at work, you can showcase that. Even experiences, if you're a traveler or you love to cook, right, share that experience. If there's any process, right, if there's a process in place that you put at work or even something as simple as cooking or working out or any techniques that you might know, Sharing all of those can really be helpful too to other people and engage with them. So the other thing I want to mention is it doesn't always have to be really technical. Too often people feel like, oh, if I'm sharing my expertise, it has to be technical. Every time I put out a technical post on my blog, hardly anybody read it, right? I would do things like, here's a test-driven uh, development approach, and it wouldn't get read. I would post, here's my cute cat, and everyone would read it, right? I was just like, okay, I can't win, like I slaved over this article. Uh, and that's when I started to realize that people were really interested in the human interest pieces when they were coming and approaching me. And you know, sometimes they would read the, the content that was more structured and more technical, uh, but really they kind of wanted an easy way to digest it. They didn't necessarily always want to read you know, the 10 steps to write better code or something like that. So you have to kind of gauge your audience over time, but don't feel like you have to do something technical, especially if you're not technical, right? So keep that in mind. Now, this is obviously a classic. I can't write. Well, here's the thing that I would say for people that can't write. You can also do videos, but if you're like, oh no, I can't be on camera, that's also a little bit nerve-wracking, nerve uh, then I have one more tip for you. And that's turn conversations into content. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I have a newsletter that I've been putting out now for the last two years, and that's about 104 newsletters. I do not come up with 100, uh, I have not come up with 104 ideas. I certainly haven't come up with one every week. Really what I do, I think about an experience I've had during the week, maybe a student that I've mentored or somebody that I've had an intense conversation with, and I essentially recall that conversation and send it out. And the reason that I do that is, one, I'm just not that creative every week. Uh, and two, if I've had a conversation with somebody uh, about a topic, then it's very likely that there are other people within my audience that have that similar experience who might be going through with it. And lo and behold, I get lots of emails back saying, wow, how did you know that I, what I was going through? I was like, well, because five other people <laughs> that I talked to that week were going through that same thing, right? So this is a really um, great way to create content without feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to be this amazing writer. I know a lot of people have that writer's block or they at least have that idea block. And even if you're not a fantastic writer, taking a conversation and reformatting it can be a great way to start and to engage with a potential audience. 
So think about it that way. You don't have to be like, oh, I need to sit down and write an outline, do my spell check, get it you know, all perfect. This, this isn't the New York Times level yet. So what about what people want, right? I've talked to you a little bit about cats. Um, but the truth is that people want other things as well. So a few things that people want are a way to fast track their learning. So even though I said that sometimes they don't want that technical content, sometimes they do. But the key is, can you give them a really reduced set, right? Can you give them uh, top three techniques or five ways to get something done, right? Giving them that fast track learning is going to save them a ton of time from going out purchasing a bunch of books and having to sift through material. The second is if there's a really complex topic and you can simplify it in some way, right? I just saw up here, there's one creator who has all the like esoteric tricks to building uh, on iOS. I thought that was pretty cool, right? Because how many people know all the esoteric things about iOS or Objective-C? So there are some things like that where, you know, they might be really daunting to other people, but if you have that specific uh, level of knowledge or expertise, you can share that with them. Now the third is obvious. Everybody you know, wants to make money because we've got to put a roof over our heads. So if you've done something where you have been successful and been able to generate revenue, right, or, or, or get money for other people, this is another great topic. And then the final is everybody, most everybody, wants to be happy. So if you've done something that's led to happiness, and by happiness I mean your team is happy, your spouse is happy, your dog is happy, right? Whomever that is, whatever that technique was, sharing that can be really helpful as well. Now, having said all this, you're going to be like, God, this is so much work. It's like a lot of time, I have to think an idea, I have to sit down, I have to write it, I have to build an audience, right? Yes, it might seem like it's going to take up a lot of time. But here's the thing, this isn't about investing a ton of time, right? What I'm telling you isn't to go out and start writing a book or start blogging incessantly. Instead, what I'm suggesting is that you just pick one thing, right? Pick one thing that you want to start writing about. So for me, when I started, I was just like, I'm just going to tell the world that I'm a female and I'm an engineer and I'm working at this startup. And that was about it. It was just about sharing my journey and then going from there. So don't feel like you have to sit down and figure out the next 10 blog posts that you're going to do or what the title of your book is going to be about, right? Take it slow and just you know, figure out what's one thing that you'd like to share. It could even be as simple as what was the last conversation that you felt was PG um, that you had with your best friend. Now the key is when you decide to pick that one thing, then what you want to do is you want to break it down, right? Think about it like you're giving somebody a recipe, right? That they can then replicate. This is really critical, because unless it's an experience, right? If you're like, oh, I went to Italy and I went to this amazing restaurant and then I shopped here, you don't necessarily have to make that into a recipe. But if you are in the mode of sharing some expertise, one of those techniques or frameworks or languages, then you want to think about how you can create a recipe, something that's replicable. Um, so if that's the case, you know, make sure that you've definitely tested this out a couple times. And then own up to the limitations. And by that, I, what I mean by, by that is, you know, if you aren't sure about something, then, then mention, hey, this is like for this particular person, um, this isn't for this type. So this is like a guide for beginners who are just getting started, or this is a guide for intermediate, or this is for like Italian for people that aren't from Italy, right? So make it very clear who it is and who it isn't for, right? Even if you're going to do something as simple as, as doing a guide or doing a post. And that way people understand, right? They understand that it's not for everybody, and they get the context. Now, it can be a little bit daunting to just put something out there, hitting that publish button. So, for example, when I started, um, the first blog post I ever created, I was really nervous about getting it out there. So, I just decided to pick like a handful of friends and I emailed all of them and said, hey, what do you think of this post? I'm like sharing my life story here. Does it seem too, you know, self-absorbed? Does it seem like it gets the point across? Um, and they gave me some feedback, right? They were like, oh, there's a typo here. Might want to fix that. You know, put a nice little picture up of yourself. Um, so keep that in mind. You can get some feedback from your friends. And a lot of times that can be invaluable. So this was like one of the first um, topics that I had written about, um, which is when to build and when to buy. This was back in 2009. And today we kind of take this for granted. You know, it's a few years later. Um, but at the time, there were a lot of companies that were kind of struggling with this decision. There weren't a lot of tools in the market. So what I decided to do was first, uh, I actually wrote a blog post on it. And then the second was I decided to present that blog post as a talk. 
right? So this gives you an idea that you can actually leverage content multiple times. You don't have to just use it once. Second, this was something that I did recently. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Bootstrapping. So I noticed that a lot of people were um, really into fundraising, um, and there were a number of companies that got some seed funding, but then when it came to Series A, not a lot of people got funding. And for me in particular, I got impacted. Um, and what I decided to do was bootstrap. But I noticed that there wasn't a lot of literature. Like I really struggled through the process, and ultimately I was able to get my company back on board. Um, but I certainly had to, you know, kind of bob and weave the whole time in order to, to find my way. So I thought, what, wouldn't it be great to actually share some of my experience, some of the process that I started to put in place with other people? So I actually wrote a guest blog for uh, this company called Clarity, and then eventually it got syndicated to other people. Um, so it was just you know three steps for what I did. I shared that with people, and then I asked them you know what it was that worked for them and did it. Um, and I was very clear. I was like, hey, I got to a point of making six figures with my business. Uh, if you want to get to the next level, seven figures, uh, I'll let you know in like a year or two, right? So I was clear about what the limitations were and what the results were with, with readers. Now, the other thing which I kind of hinted to was reusing this content, right? Don't feel like just because you put something out there that that's it. Oh gosh, every week you have to come up with something new or every day you have to come up with something new. You don't. And you can actually use the content in a number of ways. You can syndicate it through a number of other channels if people are open to it, so you can do some guest blog posting. Um, the other thing that you can do, like I suggested before, is give a talk on it. Um, and then you can also put it in an email if you have any newsletters that you hand out to people. So the key is that you're not afraid of, of actually reusing your content, right? Don't feel like someone's gonna call you out and be like, God, I've seen that post like in 10 different places, right? That's okay. Um, the last thing to think about is this is actually the beginning of your book, right? You don't have to necessarily turn every blog post into a book, but once you start to accumulate them and you start to see a theme, then it might be something great to, to then convert into a book. So a lot of times when I tell this to people, you know, the, the next excuse is like, I don't like self-promotion. I don't really want to promote myself on like Gumroad or some other site like that. It seems kind of sleazy. <laughs> like, okay, well, if you don't promote you, who's going to promote you, right? So that's the way to think about it is the, when, you, when you put some content out there, when you share your expertise, it's not you saying, hey, look, I'm so amazing. It's, hey, I've got some ideas that I'd really like to share with people out there. Maybe they would find it useful, right? It's just like, once again, having a conversation with your best friend. You probably give them some sort of tips like, hey, check out this like, cool new bar or restaurant that I've been to, right? It's not you being self-promotional, it's you adding value to someone else's life. So the, the, the reason I say start with your network is because oftentimes when you start with your network, that's when you're more, most authentic, right? Because you really care about what your immediate network thinks about. You might not care about what Joe in Bulgaria cares about, but you certainly care about your immediate network and nurturing them and getting good feedback from them. So this is why I always say go back to your network, share with them first. The other is that's where things spread, right? So if you tell your first five friends, they're going to get out and they're going to tell other people. And that's also going to be an authentic way of promoting, right? Because they've heard it from your friends who know you best. And that's basically how you end up building an audience, right? It starts with that small group. When I started writing my newsletter, um, like I said, two years ago, there were really only 40 people on that list. Today it's about 3,500, right? I didn't get there in two years by just like sitting at my computer and typing away. I certainly got out and did a lot of promotion for it, but a lot of it was people sending and forwarding emails and coming to the website and talking about it. So keep in mind that it's not going to happen overnight. It is going to take a while. So if building an audience is really important to you, you've got to do a few things. And the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to be clear about what it is that you're doing. So now you, know, you can still play around with what the themes are of your blog uh, or of your posts or whatever the content is that you're doing. Um, but the next thing you have to do is you have to really be consistent. And this is where a lot of people um, fail to build an audience is they just kind of do things haphazardly. Like one day they're writing a blog post, the next day they're producing a video, and then the third day they're like, oh, let's, I don't know, do some microblogging on Twitter, right? And it's not very clear what it is that they're trying. Maybe they're experimenting and that's fine, but ultimately what you want to do is you kind of want to pick 
one, maybe two platforms, and really develop your content on there. And it, this isn't that you, know, you have to do a widespread approach. If you do it really well on one to two platforms, that's usually enough, right? So if you do a video, you do a blog, you get your point across through those two channels and you say, hey, I'm gonna do something maybe once a month, maybe once a week if you have more time, right? Just that level of consistency can really be key. And if you don't believe me, you know, uh, a good story that I'd like to share with you is, you know, like I said, for the last two years, basically every week I've been sending out these newsletters. And I make it a point to send them out Wednesday at 10 a.m. And at first, you know, this was just kind of like a ritual for me so that I would get it out. But now my audience writes back and tells me, yeah, I'm so happy, like Wednesday morning, I'm like sitting there and waiting for your newsletter to come uh, so that I can read it and it's like a nice inspiration in the middle of my week, right? So that will start to happen, but you've got to be consistent. So figure out what your level of consistency is. Is it once a quarter? Is it once a month? Is it once a week, right? And then kind of make the time and commit the time to doing that. And know that you can set the frequency, right? You are ultimately in control of this. So if you decide, hey, I can't do something like you once a week, maybe you do something every six months. Maybe you wrap up a project, you talk about the project, or you create a guide of what you learned in that project, right? And then you could put that on your LinkedIn profile, maybe you can sell it on Gumroad, maybe you can put it on your blog, right? You could put it in all these different places, and you can really just promote that one piece of content consistently. So, We've talked a little bit about you know, just doing this as fun for a hobby, but I'm sure there are a number of you out there who are like, I've already got a lot of content and I now need to start making some money on it, right? How many of you out there are like, I need to start making some money on it, okay? So, uh, the thing that you wanna do is you wanna start testing. So, uh, and I'll explain once again how I started making money on Gumroad. Uh, so what I mean by testing is you want to start running some experiments, right? So you might say, you know, I've written like these five great essays or I've got these three guides that I give out to people. Um, I'm a designer or I'm an engineer or I'm a PM or I'm an artist, right? I've got all these things, um, but I'm not really sure what to do with them. I don't really know what the channels are. I don't really know how I can grow my audience. So one of the things that I say is you've really got to think about this as you are creating a product, right? You're creating something that you want people to eventually buy from you. And so here's an example of a product that I'm currently working on. Hopefully you can read it. Um, it's a book that I'm writing. It's called How to Transform Ideas into Software Products. And when I started to think of this, I, I basically pulled in a lot of content from my blog. Um, but the first thing I did is I created this landing page. And I started to just promote this landing page and tell people, hey, if you're interested, you know, below this there's a little place where you can sign up to get some emails. And the reason that I did this is I just wanted to see if there's any interest. Would, would people even bother to be interested in a book with this kind of title? Right, so I did a little bit of experimentation. Um, I took my most popular blog posts, I created them into two chapters, and then um, I used uh, iBooks to then create the ebook. They've got some, some great templates to use. And then I posted it on Gumroad. And guess what happened? Yes, I made money. Yes, I didn't even, I put it in zero dollars. I was really surprised when I, well first off, I should say, uh, you know, I'm just gonna plug for murder. It was super easy to put stuff on Gumroad. That's what I actually loved about it. So I put a couple videos, I put this um, book up there. It was really fast to upload it, so that was super simple. And then I just said, you know, zero dollars. You don't need to pay me for anything, because I was like, who's gonna buy two chapters, right? It's two chapters. Um, and I was very explicit about that. And surprisingly, people started to pay for it. Like, some people paid $1, some people paid nothing, some people paid $10. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Like, I didn't really think anyone was gonna pay for it. So I thought that was, was interesting, and then I got some validation, right? I was like, oh, people actually want a book like this. And not only do they want a book like this, but they're willing to pay for a book and like pay for just a couple chapters. So imagine what they might be willing to pay for the whole thing. I gotta start writing. Uh, and then I decided, um, okay, well that's great. I didn't do a whole lot of promotion yet, so maybe I should start promoting it. So I picked a couple channels where I knew I had my audience. Um, and some of that was on Twitter, some of it was through my email newsletters. Um, and then I put it on my website as well. And that's how I started to get the word out. And so at this point, I'm just looking to build out sort of the initial email base. My goal is to get about 100 to 200 signups. And once I get that, then I'm gonna start you know, writing the other eight chapters. 
I wanted to show you another example. So uh, this guy's name is Ryan, uh, Ryan Neufeld, and he is um, a Clojure developer. Um, and Ryan did pretty much the same technique. So Ryan, I, I helped him on this landing page, um, and we kind of cleaned up the copy, and he doesn't have the book written yet. Uh, in fact, it was just like an idea in his head. Um, he put this landing page up, and then he did a couple things. He wrote a blog post, and he put it on Reddit um, and a few other sites, and he has a blog as well uh, on Clojure. And he promoted it, and he got about 200 plus subscribers um, to sign up for the book. Uh, and so now he's motivated. He's like, okay, I gotta start like, writing this. Uh, and his goal is to hopefully write it in 90 days. Um, so this is another pre-sales technique that you can try, right? So you don't even have to build anything. You don't have to write anything. You just put up a landing page and explain the value of what it is that you're creating and see if people are interested. Make sense? Okay. This other guy, Nathan Berry, uh, he was actually at the Creator Studio before. Um, so Nathan has actually made, I think, over six figures selling on Gumroad. So he's, he's quite um, the seller on Gumroad. Uh, and Nathan wrote this book, uh, or actually he started as well, this, uh, he was do doing this design book for iOS 7, um, and he told me the story where, once again, he just put up this landing page before he started writing the book, um, and got a bunch of people to subscribe and pre-order it, and then he started writing the book. Um, and he's got a great free email course, so for any of you that are interested, check out his website, it's just nathanberry.com, um, and you can sign up for mastering product launches, and he'll send you like one email over the course of a few days. Um, on different techniques that you can use to, to build your own or to get your product out. This is another, um, another one that I wanted to highlight to you because this isn't actually a book. This is just a guide. This is like a maybe, what is it, 47 page guide that Nathan put together on selling digital products. And um, I think he sells it for $5, but he had some promotion for zero. Um, but you can see how simple it is, right? It's not that he wrote an entire book um, before he put something out there, he just really put together a nice guide. A couple things that I really liked about this and got me to buy it um, was that his design was really nice, right? Like, he's obviously done a good job. It's simple, but it's nice. He's used some good typography. Um, and then he, you know, creates some valid, he, he validates who he is, or he creates some credibility. So he says that um, he's actually sold over 300K in digital project, uh, products over the last 18 months. So he's got some level of credibility, right? So you can do something similar like this, and this is actually um, an example of using Gumroad. So the next thing is obviously finding out where your audience hangs out and building that, right? It's obviously gonna start initially with your particular network, but then beyond that, you're gonna have to, if you wanna make money, if you wanna scale, if you wanna create um, or publish more books, um, then you're gonna have to build out more of your audience. So, so the way to think about that is, um, thinking about promoting early and often. So try a couple channels, try some social media, try your network, try doing an event, put, put it on Gumroad, promote it on Gumroad, right? So think about some different ways that you can build out your audience. <coughs> and then once you get that subscriber number, then you can start writing. So you don't have to feel like, wow, I've gotta like go home right now and start frantically writing. I still don't know what I'm writing about, right? So take a moment instead to think about what it is that you wanna share. It can be as simple as a guide. Now, the thing is, if you're gonna do this approach, uh, this pre-order, this pre-sales approach, the couple things that I advise people are, it could be six months, it could be a year, right? You are kind of your best and worst friend in this situation where you may be really motivated, but you might have those days where you're not able to be as creative as you'd like. So if that happens, then one of the things that you wanna do is inform your audience, right? So if, if, if it's gonna be slow to be delivered, let them know. But the other thing that you can do is get them involved, right? So this is actually what I really loved um, about using a tool like Gumroad was I could distribute some of the content early, like a couple chapters of the book, and then I would get the people's email addresses and I could write back and say something like, hey, thanks for giving me 10 bucks. Um, and thanks for downloading a couple of chapters. Can you give me some feedback, right? And usually people like wrote some pretty detailed feedback. Uh, I asked them for something very pointed. I was like, was this useful? Did you find the strategies helpful? Were you able to replicate the process? And they responded. So then I had a little bit more direction. 
Um, so it was more like a Kickstarter campaign where you know you, you put something out there and then a year later you're going to deliver the final product, but all along the way people are involved in the process. And that can really be great for building up your audience as well. So don't just think about, hey, I've got to get all these people signed up. Think about how you can also nurture them and get them to help you participate in the process and also to promote the work that you're doing. So, a couple things to review, like I talked about. The first is, why, now why is this important to showcase your expertise? Well, the thing that I'm suggesting is you don't have to think about it as you having some particular expertise, right? Instead, think about it as you have some ideas or you have some experiences that you want to share with other people. How can you go about doing that? Well, doing it through content is the most scalable approach. The second is, how do you find out what your area of expertise is, right? Well, like I said before, it doesn't have to be you thinking like, oh, I've got like one year of some like front end experience and some design experience, I don't know if that's a whole lot, right? You can be very open and honest about what the limitations are, but be confident about what you do know and be open to sharing that. And then we talked about building an audience, right? And the one thing I said is start from your network. Because when you start from your network, a couple things happen. The first is, you are most authentic when you're trying to nurture your own friends and family. And the second is they're also going to be really authentic about promoting you and let it go from there. And then how do you package it all up, right? So a couple things that I didn't mention is, or a couple things I did mention were, um, first, if you've already built up all this great content, think of, a, think of the themes that are running through it and use that as maybe a first chapter of a book or a guide. The second thing which I didn't mention is if you are one of these people that's really um, pressed for time, there are ghost writers. Um, and the cool thing about, I haven't used one yet, but I've heard lots of people swear by them. Um, so the cool thing about ghost writers is if you've already created some content, they can take your voice and they can emulate it and they can actually package it all up for you. So if you really want to get a book published in the next six to 12 months and you're concerned about time, you can hire somebody to actually do the work for you if you've already got a lot of that built out. Um, and then the final piece is to obviously get it out there either slowly or all at once, but as you're doing it, make sure you're nurturing your audience. If you've enjoyed this and you have a company and you wanna host a forum and showcase some of the things that y'all are working on, um, we're certainly open to doing that. We can come up with a topic together or you can tell us some topics that are interesting to you. And I'll see if I have that in my uh, tool chest. And then, like I said before, we are an education company, uh, and so our focus is to get you know, more technical people out there. Uh, so we have a few classes coming up this spring. Uh, the first one is a confident communicator class, and that's really for people who are interested in public speaking. Um, we'll also cover things like how to get over stage fright, and even how do you get paid to speak. Um, so I get paid to speak all over the world, um, so if you want to learn how to do that, you can check it out. The uh, application is due tomorrow. Um, the second, <laughs> yeah, no pressure there. Uh, the second and third, uh, the web product development is a Rails course. So if you're an engineer and you've maybe been building some features, but you're not sure how to build something end to end, and you want to learn how to build an end to end product, that is a great course. If you want to learn a little bit more of the business side uh, on how to validate, how to do things like put up that landing page and get a bunch of people, get an audience, then I would say check out my Lean Product Development course. That's the one that Jessica mentioned that she had taken. Um, and then if you want some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do have a three-month program. Um, at this time, I'm all booked up, but I'm gonna be interviewing uh, some mentees for uh, April. And then if you wanna check out my book uh, and sign up for it, it's femgenier.com slash transform ideas. Thank you everyone for coming out and thank you to our host Gumroad for having us out tonight. Um, hopefully you have gotten a chance to talk to some of the Gumroad employees. Um, but like I said, if you want to reach out to them for a job or to understand more about their products, they're certainly willing and uh, want to help. All right, and like I said, I hope I see you at the next one, April 2nd. It will also be in SF. Um, it's at the Founders Den. I don't have the exact location. It's not the Founders Den, it's near Decor. Um, but come if you want to learn some techniques on how you can evaluate early stage companies everything from equity, salary, to lifestyle, we'll talk about it. Uh, it's not just about engineers, I know that's in the title. If you're a designer or PM or whomever is interested, feel free to come out. All right, I'll see you at the next one then. Thank you.